Hi guys, welcome to my first episode of First Episode Fridays, my first ever series on my channel. First Episode Fridays is kind of a concept I came up with where I'm just gonna talk about, react, and review first episodes of TV shows, sitcoms, etc, etc. So if you have a specific show you want me to do this with, let me know down below. Today though, to start off this series, we're gonna be reacting to one of my personal childhood favorites, Life with Derek. So Life with Derek is a Canadian sitcom that started in 2005 and wrapped up its final season in 2009. So it had about a four year run. I don't know if that's a good run or not because I'm not a dork. All right, I don't know. Let me know if that's a good run or not. I can't do anything consistently for four years, so I think it's a win in their book. When I think of Life with Derek, I specifically think of Channel 63. I don't know what cable company I had growing up, but I just remember going up to the cable box and clicking the Channel 63 because that was Disney Channel. I don't know if this is because I am in America or not, but I remember Life with Derek always either coming on super late at night after all the like good shows were done, or early in the morning before Disney Junior start, Junior, 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 Disney Junior. Early in the morning before Disney Junior started playing. I don't know if that's different in Canada, like was Life with Derek like a six o'clock show or what, but if I was watching Life with Derek, it was past my bedtime and I probably had to sneak and watch it. Also, the first episode of Life with Derek is free on YouTube and a lot of other episodes, I think up to like season three, you can find on YouTube. I don't know why, I don't know if it's like allowed, but it's there. So the episode starts off and we immediately are introduced to one of the main characters, Casey, and her little sister, Lizzie, and they're unpacking into what seems to be their new bedroom. Do you like your new room? Why should me? He's got the cage to himself and room to exercise. We're the ones trapped like rats with no room to breathe. Five seconds in, Casey has already proved herself to be the whiny, annoying character that she is throughout this entire show. Don't worry, we'll find space for everything. True, the desk could go on top of the bed. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have her younger sister, Lizzie, who acts as if she's a middle-aged woman who started a book club. Like, she's just so mature and put together. At least mom's really happy, and George is really nice. She's very logical, she's very calm. Meanwhile, we have Casey, who was probably like 16, 17, complaining about her new room not being big enough. I'll admit the room is pretty small, especially if she's having to share it with her sister. But if we're being logical here, people in New York pay like $2,000 a month for a room even smaller than that. So suck it up, Casey. Can you please turn it down? Another main character is introduced, Derek, or should I say, Derek! Who are you? And to no one's surprise, Casey complains again about the size of her room. So we're getting a common theme here. Uh, the issue in this episode is there is no room in our room. And everyone is going to hear about it. <laughs> and then Derek is just kind of like, well, then get rid, get rid of some of your junk. And Casey throws a soccer ball at him. And then the iconic theme song plays. <laughs> If I get copyrighted for this Canadian 2005 theme song, uh, that'll be tragic. Cut the theme song and what do we walk into? Casey complaining again, ladies and gentlemen. Casey's dramatic ass proceeds to write a letter. Dear mother. Talking about how miserable she is. I myself am not happy. So she walks into the bathroom without knocking and then proceeds to get mad at her younger stepbrother, Edwin, for not knocking. Edwin, don't you people knock in this house? But she didn't knock to begin with and the door was open in the first place. So like, I don't know about you guys, but I don't knock on open doors. And then to go along with our theme of Casey just complaining the entire episode, she starts to complain to George, which is her new stepfather. And by the way, can I just say George is literally the coolest stepdad I've ever seen? And I've seen quite a few stepdads in my time. 
How's it going up there? Well, since you asked, A, there's no room for my desk. B, Derek's an idiot. Again, no offense. Again, none taken. And George just like tries to play it cool, you know, keep it loosey goosey, new stepdaughter trying to keep the relationship good. But also like what an uncomfortable position for him to be in, you know, like behind closed doors, he's doing the nasty with this kid's mom. And then here comes Casey, this uptight, annoying, I'm sorry, she's annoying. All right, and I know George thinks that he's just not gonna say it. So I'll say it for you, George. She's annoying. Your new stepdaughter, annoying. She complains a lot. So George, being the cool dude he is, tries to make Casey happy by saying she could have the entire basement to herself. You'd have total privacy for your schoolwork. And what does Casey do? She complains. Yeah, she complains. Uh, it's a little depressing. Because yeah, an entire basement to herself is not good enough for her. To be exact, she says basements are soul destroying, especially this one. Hey Casey, your soul already seems to be pretty crushed. <laughs> I wouldn't be too worried about protecting it. So it's the next morning and Nora made eggs. I made scrambled eggs for everyone. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Nora made eggs. But here's the kicker, no one wants Nora's eggs. Would you like some eggs? Thanks, but I'm a cereal kind of guy. Lizzie, would you like some? Thanks, but I feel like cereal too. Good morning, Casey. I made eggs. I'll just have cereal. Marty, would you like some eggs? Cats don't eat eggs, unfortunately. No, I should go. I have to get a locker before school starts. Ooh, well, have a great first day. What's the deal with parents having these elaborate, extravagant breakfasts Breakfasts? Breakfasts? Breakfasts. Good job, Morgan. Hey, Morgan, it's breakfast. And then the kids like running downstairs and being like, I'll take a little bite of toast. I'm not that hungry. And walking away. Are you kidding me? If my parents made me a big breakfast like that before school every morning, I would have to eat it. Like I remember as a child, if I didn't finish my dinner, like what was on my plate, the plate would stay there. Like my dad would always say like, it's gonna taste better warm. Because if I let it get cold, it, I wouldn't get to heat it back up. I remember like one time I didn't eat my dinner and finally, like my, I guess my parents were ready to go to bed. They're like, whatever, go to bed. I woke up the next morning, my dinner was still sitting there. And my dad was like, there you go. There's food for today. So uh, I don't know what's up with these kids in these movies and shows getting to just like take their little, little bite of a grape and then running off to school. No, it never worked like that in my life. Okay, so yeah, it's breakfast time. No one wants Nora's eggs. And then George proceeds to pour himself a glass of milk out of a pitcher. That leads us to believe one of two things. Either they buy a gallon of milk and they pour it into a pitcher or they have a cow in the back and they milk the cow and put the milk in the pitcher. Either of those options make them complete psychopaths and it, I don't like it and it rubs me the wrong way. So Derek comes downstairs, you know, like wakey wakey, good morning Derek, and he actually wants eggs. He starts going down, not going down, that's weird. He is chowing down like Nora made the best eggs in the world. And then George is like, oh hey, those are for everyone. Oh, yeah. Even though everyone already said they didn't want the eggs. Cut to the next scene, Casey's at school and she goes to see her guidance counselor. But then she proceeds to say, I have an appointment at three, but I don't need it anymore. So I'm like, why did you go to the office in the first place? <laughs> Casey gives me vibes of like the girl in art class that was really good, but would always be like, oh, my art is so ugly to hear people be like, no, it's good. That's really good. Like fishing for compliments type of girl. You want this chewed up tennis ball so bad. But of course the counselor stops her and was like, come on in. And then Casey starts doing what Casey does best, complaining. Anything new? <laughs> you mean like two new stepbrothers, a new stepsister, a new stepdad, a new house, a new school, and trying to make new friends? Uh, yeah, like that. Wow, that's uh, quite a lot of changes, huh? Yep, and all because my mom fell in love with George. The uh, guidance counselor actually gives no helpful advice. It, it sounds like you're pretty overwhelmed. <laughs> and then they both exchange like some really uncomfortable stares to one another. I think you might be onto something, Paul. And then that's it. She leaves. So that was her guidance counselor trip. I don't understand the point of that scene. 
but it's there. So the next scene is a family meeting, a blended family meeting, if you will. The whole purpose of the family meeting is for Casey to let everyone know that she wants Derek's room. What I'd like is your room. And then some weird sound effects play. <laughs> And if I'm gonna be honest, if I was in Derek's situation, I would be pissed. Rightfully so. Derek's like, um, no, you're not getting my room. And then George finally puts his foot down and he's like, no. Nora, I don't think Derek should have to give up his room. Yes, George, yes. So then there's this weird like crown throne scene change transition thing where Casey's sitting in a throne and Derek like comes and sits in her lap and it's actually like really weird. <laughs> Like I get what they were trying to do is like, oh, Derek's coming and ruining her life and she's supposed to be the queen and Derek takes it over. But the execution is just way off and it gives me weird like creepy stepbrother, stepsister vibes, you know, you know, stepbrother, those vibes. And then there's a scene where Casey and Derek, I think are like trying to come across threatening to one another. In my house, I always get what I want. <laughs> Aren't we arrogant? Yes, yeah. But it just gives me this weird like sex tension between the two and I think that's like a common theme throughout the entire show and people have made videos on that topic within itself. I don't know maybe my mind's just in the wrong spot but whatever. It's breakfast time again! Ooh, ooh. This time Nora did not make eggs. George being the sweet caring soul that he is he brings up a valid point. Casey your room is too small and you deserve some privacy. So, we're gonna spend all weekend renovating the basement into a bedroom so fabulous you won't even know it's a basement. That's sick, right? Like, so dope. An entire basement being your bedroom? Who wouldn't be happy and ecstatic and over the moon for that? You expect me to sleep in the basement? <laughs> Casey wouldn't, actually. Nora says something about George being like a great remodeler and then it cuts to like this flashback scene of George with a birdhouse and it really creeps me out. This is the first time that I got bad vibes from George. I just didn't like it. Pretty sweet, huh? I bet the birds will be fighting to move in. <laughs> mm -mm, I don't like it. And then there's like this fun little blended family moment where Nora and George and Lizzie and Edwin are all like renovating the room together and they're just like this great blended family. How about I show you paint? Do you paint? Mostly finger. Oh, welcome aboard. Final moment we've all been waiting for, guys. Casey gets the grand reveal of her new basement bedroom. And to no one's surprise, it's freaking sick. Wow. It's dope on a rope. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. It's vibey. Like there's literal fabric as her wallpaper. She's got cow print splattered in there. There's fairy lights. It's beautiful. And then Casey and Derek start arguing over this room because I guess they both were like, oh, this room's cool. You know, Casey, this room might be better suited for someone like me. What? And then the moment I have been waiting for, George finally pops off with the most iconic line. You spoiled brats. Call them out for what they are. So then Casey and Derek are left to decide who gets like the pink and purple cheetah print room, which doesn't even seem like the type of vibe Derek would go for anyways. Uh, but who am I to say? <laughs> Maybe he's into it. And then there's that weird throne crown transition again. <laughs> Then they fight over the room some more. Can you just take the basement so I can eat? You are one of the most annoying people I've ever met. Uh, and then Casey has this random realization that she's being kind of a bit. Mom, George, even though I hate basements with every fiber of my being, I will take the basement bedroom because you're both great and I'm really happy you're together and I just, I don't want to cause any more trouble. But like, instead of being grateful for the room, Casey's like, okay, I guess I'll go in the extravagant remodeled cheetah basement fabric wall room i guess if i have to and i'm like dude you're not settling for this room this room is freaking cool and they put all this time and effort into it i'm on nora and george's side here honestly life with derek no this should be life with nora and george because they are the main characters they should be at least then the episode wraps up with nora and george deciding that they get the pink and purple cheetah leopard print bedroom i think that you and i should move our bedroom to the basement the end? 
Just kidding. It's not quite over yet. It wouldn't be over without another creepy stepbrother, stepsister montage. Then it's the end. What did we just watch? I don't know. That concludes our first episode of First Episode Fridays. Let me know down below if you like this series idea or if you want me to never ever do it again. But say it nicely, please. All right, I love you guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Derek. <laughs>